Hello everybody, this is Glenn and you are in my YouTube channel, The Echo Educator, your gateway to environmental issues across the globe. In today's virtual classroom, we are going to learn about El Nino and La Nina. But first, let's recall what happens in the Pacific Ocean under normal conditions. Under normal conditions, trade winds blow from east to west, pushing warm water towards Asia and Australia. The warm waters push away from South and Central America are replaced by cooler water from the deeper part of the ocean in a process called upwelling. These warm waters in the Western Pacific pumps heat to the air, causing it to rise with more strength. Thick clouds form as the water vapor in the air gets cold and changes back into water in a process called condensation. But when the clouds can't hold the water anymore, it falls back to the earth as hail, rain, or snow also known as precipitation. This pattern of air rising in the west and falling in the east in a clockwise motion is called the Walker Circulation. During an El Nino event, trade winds weaken or may even reverse caused by slow changes in the ocean. This means less warm water is being pushed to the western Pacific resulting to a less upwelling on the eastern side. Lesser upwelling of nutrients on the eastern Pacific such as in countries like Peru and Ecuador results to death of fish and birds that feed on the nutrients. In fact, El Nino was first observed in the coast of South America in the 1600s during Christmas season, coming up with the name El Nino which means Christ Child. Also, intense rainfall may lead to flooding in the normally dry western part of South America. In Southeast Asian countries in southeastern Australia, lesser rainfall because of El Nino can lead to crop damage or harvest failures, drought, coral bleaching, and forest fires. However, other countries benefit from El Nino. For instance, in the United States, El Nino brings wetter weather to Southern California, helping its crop growth. Lesser and weaker tornadoes in the Midwest. Warmer winters to Western Canada. In Argentina, more rain boosts soybean production which is used for export. El Nino changes large-scale wind patterns that result in changes in temperature and rainfall around the globe. The other hand, the opposite of El Nino is La Nina. During La Nina, trade winds are stronger, pushing more warm waters to the western Pacific. This results to an increase in the number of clouds formed increasing the amount of rainfall in countries such as the Philippines, Malaysia, and Indonesia. That is not good at all. Too much rain will cause flooding and destroy crops and homes. Just like El Nino, La Nina also affects global temperatures. Heavy rainfall occur in Midwestern US and Canada. Stronger hurricanes form in the Atlantic Ocean. Other global effects of La Nina include drought in Peru and Chile, extreme flooding in Brazil, damaged crops in Western Africa, death of wild animals due to drought in Somalia. In some areas of the world, La Nina has positive impacts. For example, India has more rainfall that is evenly distributed across the country. This boosts more crop growth and harvest. Above average rainfall in South Africa, Sudan and Eastern Africa during a La Nina event generates pasture for animals. La Nina doesn't always follow an El Nino, but is more likely to happen after a strong El Nino based in historical records. La Nina means the little girl in Spanish and is also sometimes called El Viejo, which means a cold event. El Nino usually happens every three to seven years. El Nino and La Nina usually last nine to twelve months, but some may span years. Thank you for watching!
Now, if you like this video, don't forget to hit subscribe.